Whose birthday is it today? Me. Mine. <laughs> Just getting cupcakes for Mariah's class. You go On my way to the gym. I missed the gym. I'm also going to do my 21 day fix at home workout as well. But I got to get in the gym today. I had two big glasses of wine last night, which I'm really regretting. So I have to burn that shit off. So I'm going to do some fasted cardio today. ready for your being on the show is different. Could you talk a little about how you got into the art of tattooing and maybe even a step before that about the playing basketball because it sounds like that helped you through your competition. Sure, sure. Um, I, I've been an artist my whole life, a visual artist. I, as far back as I can remember, I know my mom used to tell me that I was drawing and painting before I could even speak words, you know, so I'm sure I've seen a couple of things, and I don't know how I ended up where I'm at now with drawing the stuff I started out drawing, but um, <clears throat> you gotta start somewhere. So I, I did that as I, as I got older, got into sports. Um, I had a pretty rough upbringing, so sports really, and art helped me kind of find my head again when, when I couldn't understand life, you know, as a child and whatnot. And uh, that went on through high school and got an opportunity to play college ball. Um, so I, I went to Blaine Community College in Brennan, Texas. Played there for about a year. Came back to Pima. I attended Pima for a year and got an offer to play semi-professional basketball. And the opportunity kind of landed in my, in my lap. You know, it was kind of weird. So I jumped on that not knowing the consequences of accepting money and getting involved in that type of circuit, it, it affects your college eligibility as far as an uh, being an athlete, college athlete. <clears throat> so I did that, came back home, and was super excited about, about venturing onto, in, into the professional you know, basketball scene. And I took a visit to Pepperdine, and um, I, I, was, I was certain that from that moment on, just a year at that school, I was gonna go to the NBA. Like it was, Everybody, everybody knew it. So I'm sitting there working out in the gym, and the coach comes out of his office, and he pulls me aside, and another guy comes out in the suit, and I'm just like, my heart dropped. You know, I just, I, I felt it in my gut. And uh, they found out that I, I played in a little semi-professional tournament, and I lost my eligibility. So I didn't have a father growing up, so I didn't know the ins and outs, you know, the technical aspects, of the roles of the clearinghouse, and, and all that. Um, my mom didn't know. You know, raising my raising my sister and, and I, she had three or four jobs at at a time sometimes. So, like me needing help, you know, it wasn't always accessible. Um, at the time, it was Art Center Design College, and I wanted to get I wanted to get back into art, but I kind of lost myself, kind of getting carried away with you know the whole basketball thing. Um, I started going there, and I hated it. Um, they were trying to push me more in the graphic design direction, which I think could have been amazing. Um, but I'm more of, of a, you know, an illustrator. So I, I was beyond board, and I got another opportunity to go to Mexico to play basketball. And at the time, I'm like, basketball in Mexico? Like, no, I'm not going. So the guy was real, real persistent, and there was a lot of stuff that goes on here in Tucson and Phoenix, um, sports-wise. So he would come down every time I had a basketball game, and I would see him in the stands, and he was like, this, "This guy's weird. He's crazy. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to play basketball in Mexico. No one plays there." Um, one day, I just, I don't know. He caught me in a good mood. Um, I think I just finished winning a dunk contest, so I was like on a high. <laughs> I thought I was the best thing walking. And uh, he asked me again, and I just, 
you know, I was like, why not? You know, and, and I went for it, played uh, basketball in Mexico for six years. And in the off season, I would have kind of like some odd jobs. And I remember the last job I had during an off season was uh, for Ben and Bradstreet. And what we did is we worked with small businesses and we helped them <clears throat> gain access to their credit reports so they can like know what's going on. And, but my sales rate was like 90 something percent. So I, <laughs> the training classes really, really worked out. Um, and I, I was probably working at Denver Bradstreet maybe for about a month. And the, uh, the manager came by my desk and he told me, he, he asked me why I was working there and I totally did not expect that. And he told me I had more talent on one finger than anyone in that whole building, you know? And I, I don't, I've never been one to take compliments well. Um, so I, I didn't really know like where he was coming from, but something clicked because I went home that night and I purchased a uh, tattoo starter kit. So it comes with, you know, two machines that you have to build. Um, a liner and a shader, you have colors, you have just just the essentials, but very minimal. And uh, I was sitting there looking at it, and there was a grapefruit next to it. <laughs> looking around the house, no one was there, so I set it up. I was all nervous, I was sweating, and I just tattooed the grapefruit. I, 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 did, I did some lettering, I think it was my name, and uh, I tattooed it. And like I, I couldn't believe I mean, I know it was a grapefruit, you know, was, uh, <laughs> this big time, like, person that was waiting to get tattooed by me. But anyway, I, I did that, I took it into work the next day, and I gave my two weeks. And I had probably about 15 people that I worked with that wanted to get tattooed. And then once my friends found out about it, it I just, I never looked back, you know. So, um, I tried to juggle uh, tattooing and, and professional basketball, but it, it was just too much. I ended up having um, a son, and I didn't want to be, I, I wanted to be there, you know, for him. I didn't want him to come up how I did. So it was like, all right, um, basketball doesn't last forever. You know, you can only play for so long. Your son's getting older, and now you're, you, know, you think you're gonna be a tattoo artist, tattooing grapefruits, like, well, you know, what are you gonna do? So I, I made a choice, and, um, I kind of stopped playing basketball and just focused. I really tried to hone in on my craft. You know, tattooers come in a dime a dozen, so it's like, what what are you going to bring to the table? You want to be ambitious and you want to be impactful and you want to, you know, do, do good and do justice to the industry. So that, that takes, I mean, countless hours and days of, of just of work and starting from nothing. I don't, I don't know how I got to where I'm at, but I guess just being myself, and here I am, hanging out with you guys. <laughs> Thank you, that's great. Oh, that's so, a situation like that, a stressful situation. I mean, TV's gonna be amazing. Um, <laughs> so so how did you get on it? So I, I got a phone call one day, leaving the gym, and uh, the woman was, you know, giving me her name and telling me what she, what she did, and she was with Ink Master. Pull the phone away and I put it on speakers. I'm, I'm driving, you know. And I kind of pull over a little bit and I'm listening to her talk. And she, I don't even, I still don't remember what she asked me, but I, did, I guess I didn't respond because she was asking me if I'm okay, if I'm still there. <laughs> um, I was just trying to like make sense of the whole situation. So, you know, said that they stumbled across me. They have a, a talent, a talent team. I got a phone call and she's like, you know what? You sound unsure. Uh, I know you're familiar with the show, and you said you hated it, but just think <laughs> about it. <laughs> so, at, like, at, at this point, we got the phone, I was like, I, I think I just shot myself in the foot, you know, I, I ruined this opportunity. Um, as soon as I got home from the gym, I, I told my wife what happened, and she was looking at me like I was crazy. And she was like, if you don't call her back right now, we're gonna have problems. So <laughs> I thought about it, and when she said that, I pretty much made up my mind. You know, um, I didn't know, I, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I just based off what I saw, my drawback was I, I just didn't feel I related 
to the people who have been on that show, uh, just personality-wise. And that was the first thing. When she called me back the next day, I was very, very honest with her. I was like, look, I'm beyond grateful for this opportunity, but you have to know I'm not going to be a jackass on TV. Number one, because I'm not, you know, and, and number two, is, like, it's, it's more than just this opportunity. I still have to come back home and live my life, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm a parent, um, and I have, you know, a large following athletically and in the, in the tattoo business, so I, I don't, I don't want to ruin that. And they were like, just be yourself, but if you can just, we know you're very chill and you have a very calm demeanor, but if you can just turn it up a notch, I'm just like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but sure, yeah, whatever. I was, at this point, I was doing what I could to be a part of something big, you know. And um, you wanted to be on it. Well, like, what were your reasons for wanting to be on it at that point? Tucson, Tucson, we're, it's not known. I think our our culture is is looked over. You know, um, we're we're a small city but I, I feel we're very mighty when we need to be you know and I saw it as an opportunity to kind of not only get myself out there as an artist but just put Tucson on the map in a different aspect you know what I mean um, and it, it, they were, I was just carrying so much more and every time I, I go back and I, I think about how I felt at the time not at one point did I ever feel like it was it was just for me, you know. So I don't I don't know I don't know if that you know made a big difference in the universe and made things work out in my favor. But I that's what I was there for. I, I was I was fighting for my for my family and and for other people in my position. You're gonna be gone for what nine weeks? Yeah you know, yeah preparing in in that aspect saving money. Um, that's one thing my wife and I talked about it, it weighed heavy on my heart to just leave her hanging, you know, with five kids. But I had a nice break. <laughs> um, preparing in, in you know in life that that was that was tough, but what can you do? You know, it's it's something that you agree to do it and and we as a team had to do what we had to do to make it work. Um, as far as my career, man, there's nothing you can do to prepare for for what I was involved in. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you are efficient in every style of tattooing, but then there's a twist. There's a twist to everything. There's a twist to how we walk in the room. There's a twist to how we're breathing. There's a twist. There's just the, there's twists everywhere. Um, so once I was there and the lights were on, the cameras were on, I realized how unprepared I was. At that moment is when I just I let go, you know, and I just kind of wrote it. Okay, we're gonna get more into that in a second. The, the first, I think the first week, maybe two weeks there, every day, I had, I don't know how many producers coming up to me, wanting me to take, I don't know how many different angles to everything. And just n none of it just made sense, you know? And, and I, 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 I get it, I was like, okay, like you guys need more energy, I get it. I told you before I got here, you know what I mean, like how, how I was going to be. So that, for me, that was the biggest struggle because I, I have a hard time letting people down, you know. So to, to get to where I was at and to have that kind of opportunity in front of me, I, I really did not want to ruin it, you know. So I, I would try and find situations to where I can, like, squeeze in there and then turn it up a notch or just kind of get comfortable you know but it, it really took like that first week or so to just really as, as i mentioned earlier like once i just I, I let go and just went along for the ride you should go on because you suck it's just like well okay it doesn't matter what you say it's up to the judges but i like i, I was in those situations but they whatever they did i they I would always mention that they couldn't <laughs> They couldn't get me involved, you know. So we we would look at the at the production side and like, like, I don't, I don't know what she wants to do because he's just not he's not budging. It just wasn't it wasn't my yeah. style. It got ugly, and that was the you know, there's so much more that did not get shown, you know, to that scene. But um, everything was 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 very real, and and they they do what they can. They, you have to they need a show, 
you know, so you gotta do what you gotta do. That's something that gives you an end result. So you know that if you're a non Off camera too. <laughs> <laughs> 